In this video, we'll look at the different shape tools available in Boxy SVG. We'll start with the rectangle tool. If we hover over, it tells us what tool these are. So hover over and find the rectangle tool and left click to select that tool. And then we can just left click and hold down the mouse. When we unclick the mouse, it will set our shape. And then we can get back into the transform tool to either move that around or make changes to it. If we go into the edit mode, we can edit the radius of these corners over here. And a quick way to get into the edit mode when we're already in the transform mode is just double click on there and we'll be into the edit mode. And from the transform mode, we can also click again and get into the rotation. We've covered all this in previous videos. I'm just doing a quick recap. When we're working with shape tools, it's a good idea to have the geometry panel open. You can hover over to the right hand side and click that geometry panel. And this is going to always show specific things about the shape we've drawn or the shape that's selected on the top. And on the bottom, it's always going to be generic. So these are, settings are always going to be the same, controlling rotation and changing the X and Y where it's at on the canvas, um, as well as the origin point for this little crosshair here, how it rotates around that point. All this can be changed down here under object. But specific things to the shape can be controlled over here. So this one says it's a rectangle and we can control this radius and by default it locks them all together. But we could do these independent if we wanted to change the radius um, on this bottom left hand side to be different than the other four, we can come in and do that manually. So just be aware specific attributes for the selected object can always be changed manually under the geometry panel. If we want to draw a square, we can select the rectangle tool again, and this time hold down the shift key on our keyboard, and then left click and hold, and this will maintain the aspect ratio, so we can create a square with the rectangle tool as well. The circle tool lets us just create a complete circle with an aspect ratio maintained, so we can't create an oval with this. I suppose we could if we were to select it and then transform it down to look like, a, like an ellipse or an oval, but by default it's just a circle, and we can get into the edit mode by just double clicking on it or we can select the edit and then select on the object. We can change the radius of the circle. The next tool is ellipse which is going to be similar to the circle other than it has two different points for the radius instead of just one. So if we go into the edit mode we can change the y radius and also the x radius. And again these settings are going to be found over here in the geometry panel if you prefer to have a more fine adjustment or adjust the radius manually by typing in a specific value. The ring tool is similar to circles. It has a hole in the middle. So when we go into the edit mode, we can see the different ways that we can adjust this. We learned in the last video we could actually create this ourselves by dragging a, a shape over top, so a, a, a circle or an ellipse over top of another ellipse. We can select both of those and then go into the shape and go to this exclude. And that will create a similar looking shape. The only difference is when we go into the edit mode, these are all just going to be nodes. So if we want to change the inner side of this ring, we have to come in and manually do that. Whereas this one already has preset, we can change these values very simply. And they look different in the elements panel as well. If we look at the elements panel, we see these are both defined as a path, but they're achieving it very different. And that's why we can control this one differently and change the settings uh, different than we could this. We could convert this to a path. So this, this is even though it's called a path in the elements panel, um, it's technically still a shape. But all we have to do is select this, and then we can go to shape to path. And now this will behave just like the one on the right. So these, these are both just made up of nodes now. So just be aware that when we draw these shapes, uh, they have we can always convert them to paths. But before we convert them to paths, they're going to have very unique uh, different things that we can do with them, just like this ring had, the way that we can change this, uh, the inner radius and the outer radius. Another tool we can look at is the pie tool. This lets us create sort of like a pie chart. So when, when in the edit mode is when we're going to be able to see the different attributes we can change of the shape. We can make this Pac-Man type shape. We can change how big or small it is. And we can also create sort of a little hole in the middle, sort of like we did with that last ring tool. So you can create some interesting shapes. You can just do a fraction, or you can do almost a, you can do a complete closed shape if you wanted to. Uh, so that is the pie. And very similar to that is this crescent. And I'm going to use my scroll wheel to go down here. With the crescent, it just creates sort of a crescent moon shape. 
And now we see since we scrolled down, we can't get to our, we have to scroll back up to get into the selection mode. But what we could do is just hit the escape key on our keyboard and it selects the last object that was drawn. So now we can double click on this quickly to get into the different settings we can change. Using these two different handles, we can adjust the shape to look different. Another shape we can draw is a simple triangle. The triangle is just going to have three sides. When we hit the escape key, it'll become selected. We can double click to change, and we can make it either a right triangle, or we can change the rounded corners of this triangle. So those are the options we have. Again, if we just hit the escape key, we'll get into this transform tool, and we can always get in and change this around, adjusting the size. Oh, and there was one thing I was going to mention too. Let me just go ahead and delete all of this. So I'm just gonna select everything in here and hit the delete key. When we draw a circle, it's going to have just that one point of control. If we hit the escape key and then double click, we can get into the edit mode and just control the radius of the circle. If we draw an ellipse, we get those two different points. Hit the escape key, double click, and we can change the X and Y radius. We can make this appear to be a circle. In fact, we could come over and set the X and Y over in the geometry panel. We can set uh, this X radius to 100. We can set the Y radius to 100. And now this is a complete circle. But if we look at it down in the elements panel, we see that it's still an ellipse and the circle is still a circle. They're different, uh, they have different attributes. There are different elements drawn in the code. And also when this is selected, this is what I wanted to point out, we can tr change this down. And now this appears to be an ellipse but it's still a circle that's had a transform applied to it. And this appears to be a circle, but it's actually an ellipse. So when you transform a shape, uh, even though you can squish something down and make it look different, this is still a circle with a transform applied to it. So just transforming it does not change, uh, isn't gonna change it into a path, and it isn't going to change it into have those other attributes. We can still only change the radius of this because it has that transform applied. So I just wanted to illustrate that real quick. Let's delete these and go back down. The n-gon starts out as a pentagon. So it's going to have five sides. We can control the corners, how round they are. And we can also add more sides in, or it's called arms right here. There's five. We can give it six and make it a hexagon by typing in six and hitting the return key. We can also use this slider and go up to as high as 25 arms or we can have it down, we can do eight and have it be an octagon. So the N in N-gon just stands for the number of arms that it has, anywhere from five to 25. And when we drew this, if you notice, if we hit the escape key and delete this, it draws from the center out. There's different ways that we can draw um, all of these shapes that we've been drawing. If we click on the tool a second time, we can change the drawing mode. Right now it's in polar, but if we do this planar, it will change the way that the aspect ratio is as that's being drawn. We can delete this and go into planar. And now when we draw, we can distort that aspect ratio as we're drawing. So there's different ways to draw this. And we can also tell it before we draw how many sides we want it to have. Maybe we want to do an octagon and we want it to be this polar style so it maintains the aspect ratio. Well, then it will draw a nice octagon shape for us. I'm gonna hit the escape key and delete both of these. The star tool does what you would expect. It draws a star. We can change the depth of those, of that part of the star, and we can also change the number of arms that this has. So we can have a, a, lots of different arms on the star, or we can have it a typical five-sided star. The cog is going to be very similar. The cog, we have different options. If we go into escape and then double click, we can change this hole in the center. We can change the way that these, um, this is called like the spline, I believe. We can change the, uh, the depth of the cog here. So we have, and then we can change the length of the spline as well. So we have all different kinds of options for controlling this. As well as in the geometry panel, we can change the number of teeth that it has and uh, do all, the, all these different um, operations manually as well over here. Another tool that's useful is this arrow tool. You click and then keep dragging and you can point arrows to different points. We can change like the length of the head, we can change the thickness, so all kinds of different things. Uh, in the next video, we're also going to cover changing color, so all of these things as well. We can change the color uh, of the fill and we can add a stroke. So it, just because everything is gray that I'm drawing now um, doesn't mean it has to always stay that way. 
Uh, for the cross, we can just draw a simple cross. We can change the shift to make it more of like a T-shaped. Uh, the line, if we just click, we can draw a straight line. And I want to show you this down here in the Elements panel. This is actually a line, so it's not a path. Uh, it doesn't have a fill. It's just a regular stroked line. And that's what the line tool does. We can't arc it if we go to the line and we want to click and then left click and hold. We can't create a bow or an arc like we could with the Bezier curve. I'm going to hit the escape key. Um, we'll delete a few of these because the polyline is also something you may not use as often and it's its own um, thing as well. So we just click and we keep drawing. And this will have a fill, but we can't click and hold. We can't drag and create a curve like we, we did with the Bezier curve tool. Um, if we hit the enter key, it will complete that. We can hit the escape to select this and then go into the elements panel and we see this is a polyline. So it's not a path like we would get if we were drawing. We can create something very similar looking um, if we just go into here and we do like this Bezier tool. We can create a shape very similar to this by holding down the control key and just drawing a bunch of straight lines and hitting the return key. So these shapes may uh, look similar I have them both selected. They may look similar, but this is the path and this is a polyline. So for the most part, you're probably going to want to work with paths and with Bezier curves. But if you want to do straight lines, you can, or this is especially useful um, using this polyline and also this next one, the polygon. If you're planning to embed this in a website or if you're designing something that you need to have this specific attribute polyline or polygon instead of a path. So this um, last one here is going to be a polygon, and we just left click, and this is going to do, the only difference between a poly uh, line and a polygon is the polygon will automatically close itself in, so we don't have this unclosed portion. It's automatically just closed in. I hope this video has helped you become more familiar with the different shape tools available in Boxy SVG.